So this was one of the problems we didn't get to today in dynamics, and I wanted to make sure I went over it. Um, if you want, you can print this problem off. It is located as uh, one of the documents available for lecture today, uh, problem statements. Um, so we have a motor that draws in the cable with a constant velocity, Vc equals four meters per second. So this motor is pulling up here, which is gonna cause this mass at B to rise, okay? And it has a constant velocity of four meters per second. That also tells us that the acceleration is zero. The motor draws in the cable at D with a constant acceleration of A equals eight meters per second squared. If the velocity at D is zero when time equals zero, so we're starting from rest, determine the time needed for block A to rise three meters. So we want this to rise three meters, and we want to find the time, okay? And then the relative velocity of block A with respect to block B when this occurs. And this kind of goes back to what we talked today about if you're passing a car and you have, sorry, I'm trying to find my pencil now, and you're, you're uh, passing a car and you have that relative velocity. So when we look at this, we're going to have the velocity of A compared to B, V, A, B. So the velocity of A with respect to B. So go V equals B, A, B, V, a, B, A, B, okay? So the first thing we need to do is deal with over here at A. We want this to rise three meters. And I know that I have an acceleration, okay, equal to eight meters per second squared, okay? And I set up my lengths of my cables. So I have two separate datum, one for each system. I drew my datum through here. I picked a random point on my cable that's going into the motor and I traced around. So I have SD plus 2SA. Okay. And then I rewrote this. So SA, so that's here, is negative SD over 2. So if this is pulling at 8 meters per second, this should be pulling at 4. Okay. Now I'm going to look at the system over here, and this one's a little bit trickier. Um, if you'll notice, this cable comes down and back up, but if you look at this point on the cable, it's continuously moving up. So what I really need to do is come down from center of pulley to center of pulley, and then also come down, and we're going to call that delt, uh, the distance to point C. So when I'm finding the length of cable, I'm going to have SB. As we see here, I come around and I have this length right here. So I'm going back up. So I'm going to have SB minus, I don't know what I did here, minus SC. Okay, so I have the distance up and, oh, we can redo all of this. Okay, here's my dot. I'm coming down and I'm coming back up. So we have our datum. We have our datum down to our point at C and we have our datum down to our point at B. So if I'm looking here at length two, I have SB plus and I come back up. SB minus SC. So I get two SB minus SC. And I know that when I take the derivative, um, it's going to go to zero. I also know the length doesn't really matter. It's this relationship between um, where I am as I move up and down with this pulley. So SC is 2SB, but I really need to know B in terms of C. So SC equals SC divided by 2, which makes sense. They're both positive, so as SB is going up, SC is also going up. That makes sense. So my velocity of B is my velocity of C divided at that 2. Makes sense. I'm just cutting it in half, okay? 
So then let's work on the other side over here. And I'm going to have my datum. I'm going to come down. I'm going to go back up. So this is going to be called SA. And then I have this point that's heading down SD. So if I look at length two, I'm going to have 2SA plus SD. And set that equal to zero. We have 2SA equals SD, and I'm going to keep this one negative. And actually, I'm going to pull that negative over. SA equals negative SD over 2. And the reason I kept the negative over here is I need to figure out A in terms of D. So I need all of my negatives and uh, numbers over here to make that ratio. So this also tells me that the velocity of A is negative velocity of D over 2, and the acceleration of A is negative acceleration of D over 2. Okay, So we've got our relationships now between A and D. Um, I know here that I want to figure out the time it takes for me to rise 3 meters. And I'm going to call that negative because if down is positive, then going up is a negative value. And I want to find the time. I also know that my acceleration is 8 meters per second squared. Okay. So let's start with A. So my acceleration of D is 8 meters per second squared. And I can go from acceleration to velocity by integrating with respect to time. Okay, and I'm starting at zero velocity while I have zero time. And I'm going to put my 8 in here from 0 to t dt equals 0 to v dv. And I get 8t equals velocity. And this now is my velocity as a function of time, but it's specific to particle d. I can now do the same thing. We can integrate, so I have velocity dt is ds, and we are have an equation, so I'll plug that in, so I have 8t dt, I'm going from zero to time, and as I'm looking at my position change, right now we're just looking at particle d coming down, which is the positive direction, so we're just going to count that as s. Because if this is moving 3 meters, I mean, we already know the relationship. If this is moving 3 meters, what are we looking at in terms of SD? We're looking at SD moving 6. But I'm just going to keep it as a generic equation right now. So if I integrate this, I'm going to get 4t squared equals s. And what I need to remember is we're still working with d. We've, we, we, the, the, we started with an acceleration at D, we're moving down to velocity at D, position at D. Now I can go back in, and if I have this relationship of, I know that my equation for displacement in terms of D is 4T squared, I also know I have this relationship between D and A. So to find my equation for A, I can just simply plug in minus 4t squared over 2 is minus 2t squared. And this is the equation for my particle at A, or the mass at A. Okay? We're going to come back up. So I my equation for position at A equals negative 2t squared. And I know I want to find the time it takes for this particle to move up 3 meters. I also know that up is negative because we've been calling down positive. So I can say negative 3 equals negative 2t squared. t squared equals 1.5. t equals 1.22 seconds. So it takes 1.22 seconds for this mass to move up 3 meters. Meantime, this particle on D 
will move six meters in that same time frame. Okay. If I wanted to calculate the velocity at this point in time, I can take my velocity equation and plug in 1.22. I can get the velocity of A. I could also get the velocity of D because I have a velocity equation of D. I'll wait for that to focus. Why is it not focusing back in? I'll move it. Okay. So I found the time needed for the box to raise. The next question says the relative velocity of block A with respect to B when it occurs. So if I want the relative velocity, okay, I want the relative velocity of block A with respect to B, then my equation is going to look like this. And now I need to find the velocity of A at 1.22, the velocity of B at 1.22, and then I can calculate that relative. So let's go back and look at A. So my velocity at A, we can come back up, and we have this schmancy dancy little equation, which is the velocity of D. So if I want the velocity of A, okay, if the velocity of D equals 8T, then the velocity of A has to be negative 8t over 2, which is negative 4t. And again, it's negative because it's moving up. Okay, but I can also recognize b is moving up. So I'm going to switch and start calling up positive. So I have 4t equals, and my velocity of c, okay, my velocity over here of c if the velocity of c is 4, okay, if the velocity of c is 4, then my velocity of b is 2. And because it's constant, it doesn't matter if it's at 1 second or 3 seconds or 12 seconds. So equals 2 plus velocity relative a to b. So 4 times 1.22 equals 2 plus velocity A relative to B. Okay, we multiply this out. 4.88 minus 2 equals the velocity of A relative to B equals 2.88 meters per second. And that's the answer.